Hey guys, it's Jordy Builds. Hope you guys are having a great day. Today we're going to be starting part two on the Razor MX500 build. It's been a couple weeks since we started part one. We've added quite a few parts, so we're going to go over those parts and then go on a quick ride. So let's jump right into it. All right, guys, this is the Razor MX500, so let's start from the top. We did add this headlight for night riding. It is really, really awesome. You can get this on Amazon. I will leave links to everything I talk about down in the description. So you can see the brand here. I don't know how to say that, so I'm not going to try. Moving on to the brakes, starting with our rear brake here. You can see we are running the rear pit bike brake. A um, couple different people have gone over this, so I'm just going to be quick about it. Um, you have to drill out the holes on this rotor slightly, and then you have to shave down the mounting nubs on the caliper bracket. But honestly, I'm not a biggest fan of this just because of there's such a large throw. Like it only catches from like here to here. There's only this much catch, and there's just quite a bit of throw that does nothing. So I'm not a biggest fan of that one. The front, however, the front pit bike brake works great. So all you need for this one is actually, I believe, four or five M6 washers and then some longer bolts here. But this front pit bike brake works great, stops on a dime. So the rear could be me. Maybe I didn't bleed it right. Maybe it still has a little bit of air in there, but I've bled it a lot. So that's up to you guys. There's also quite a few different brake options coming available right now. So I will leave links to those down below as well. Moving on to the front forks. We already went over these. These are the Amazon front forks with the curb hopper clamps from Brady. Brady is a really awesome guy. Really glad to have these clamps. We have a set of CRF 50 fairings on here. So this is the front fairing and then the tail fairing. This is a stock razor seat with three inch Walmart foam underneath with a Amazon seat cover along with the stock gas tank. I get quite a few questions on my plastics. So this is how I run them. Uh, just run the bolts through the top of the gas tank. Uh, this one's kind of popped out here. And then I zip tie from here to here. And it's all pretty tight, all works well, aside from this one popped out on me just because someone had oversized the hole a little bit too much. But other than that, I like it a lot, works great. And then you can see our dnm 190 millimeter air shock here we are running the my1020 plus conray motor so this is the six millimeter phase wires with the temperature sensor and then this is a heat sink from hot packs it actually works really really well moving on to our battery over here this is a 72 volt amorg it is a 28 amp hour with a max continuous discharge of 150 amp it fits in the razor tray quite nice i also have a 3d printed battery kind of wedge here just to keep it away from the shock mount however it did not hit it was just awfully close and i wasn't too comfortable with that and then the controller if you guys can see a little bit up in there we are running a kelly kvd 7212n works well don't have the highest top speed with it though so i'm going to be looking for a new controller here soon i might go with a far driver 72 450 or something along those lines maybe a vesk and then I'm sure you guys have seen, we took the RSF 650 wheels off. I just wasn't a big fan of how heavy they were. However, they were extremely smooth and they rode great. So if you guys are just going to be on the street strictly and wanting something smooth and don't mind the wheels being a little bit heavier, definitely go with those. And there's a couple other options as well. The wheels I'm running right now is a brand new set of red SX500 wheels from Razor. You can order those straight from razor.com. These look really awesome to me. I like the look a lot, but the rear wheel, especially the rear, came quite untrue. Um, so there is quite a bit of shakiness to the bike and it's just not as smooth as I had hoped for So I'm going to be checking out some other wheel options soon as well as controller options like I just mentioned So this bike is going to go through multiple stages We're going to be doing multiple parts on it as well as I'm going to be doing some shorter part install videos here soon So I'm looking forward to that Anyways, let's go ride it for a few minutes and then we will wrap up the video I just want to talk about the bike for a few, talk about the channel for a few So the controller right now, like I said, we're running the Kelly KVD 7212N. Uh, works well, works great. Uh, but the top speed right now, I believe at a 60 or 70 amps. Uh, line amps is only around 40, 40 mile an hour. So I'm looking to get a little bit more, uh, especially with the money you spend on a 72 volt battery. You know, you can get 33 mile an hour on a Vever kit and a 48 volt battery, or, you know, even a little bit more on a 60 volt battery. So. To only be getting 40 on a 72 volt a morgue a little disappointing but the uh, kelly controller is a little outdated so can't expect too much aside from that i love the bike the bike rides well i like the shocks i like the forks uh, everything's really smooth as far as the channel goes guys i am uh excited to be bringing more content soon i uh, got my helmet set up got the gopro set up also have uh, my girlfriend set up with a GoPro now, so you guys will actually be able to see some more riding footage like of me actually riding. Uh, we just got to get her a full face helmet. So that'd be awesome. We're heading back to a secret trail right now. So you guys can see how this does in the dirt a little bit. 
does really well. I just don't like this uh, rear brakes. Has a lot of throw. No big deal though. We're gonna be upgrading brakes soon. It's awful wet out today though. Rained a lot last night. So just gotta be careful. But the tires that come on these uh, SX500 wheels are pretty decent, but they just wear out quick, like very quick, if you uh, ride a lot on the street. But I like these bikes a lot because you can just go a bunch of different places. Like really, I shouldn't be here right now, but it's soaking wet and there's not a lot of people that walk this trail at all. Everyone that I've met on this trail have just said the bike's awesome. So. If you have some local trails by you guys, might be worth checking out. Just uh, beware of your local laws and uh, beware of people, really. I have quite a few parts for the uh, bike at home still. We have a rear fender and we have some lights. We have a uh, down stepper that we need to install so I can run those lights and a handful of other things. Let's go check out this park. But, uh, yeah, so I love this bike. I like being able to explore with it. Usually there's deer up here. We'll see if there's any up here right now. Nope. None up here right now. So, a couple things about this bike is uh, I just want to keep upgrading it. You know, whether it's this frame, another frame, I really just want to have a MX500 dedicated for the channel to keep upgrading it, see how fast we can get. Uh, also, we're going to have a lot more custom stuff coming soon. Uh, I am a fabricator, welder by trade, so I plan to probably make a couple of custom frames. Uh, probably going to be making some custom battery boxes, stuff like that. So I look forward to modifying these bikes in a way that is a lot different than what everyone's used to. Oh, there's a cop right here, so we'll be interested to see how this goes. But I'm not going to drive past him because that would not be the smartest thing of me to do. I'm actually going to get out of here. But yeah, so the top speed on this bike is 40 miles an hour, like I mentioned. Uh, it's plenty fun. But you just want a little bit more. And the motor just feels like it can definitely take more. I believe I'm only running 60 or 70 amps right now. But with the heat sink, you can run a little bit more. Not too much, but a little bit. Uh, also looking forward to upgrading from the stock 25H chain. Uh, we have a 35, we have a, 30, a number 35 or a 35H. I don't know if it's 35H or not, but we have a number 35 uh, front sprocket for our motor. I just need to order the chain and the rear sprocket and sprocket adapter. So that'll be awesome too. We'll probably be able to gear it a little bit differently and get a little bit more top speed out of the gearing. And then, like I said, once we get a more efficient controller with some field weakening, then we will be able to do hit a much higher top speed. I'm really hoping for 55 mile an hour. 55 mile an hour would be insane. But We'll see. It kind of just depends on a lot. Depends on your tires, weight, all a lot. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, my fender's about to fall off here. So we're going to get home, get this fender hooked back up. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to see more riding content, let me know. Uh, I'm going to have a lot more here soon. Got the camera set up, got a lot of batteries. So should be good on that end. Hey guys, this is going to be it for today's video. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you liked the video, make sure you thumbs up and subscribe. If you guys like the bike and like the riding content, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, you can also let me know down there in the comments. So thank you guys for watching. It was an awesome video. I will see you guys in the next one.